Recent Dying Light 2 trailers have revealed tons of info about the world and characters we'll all discover on December 7th. The game is attempting to expand its universe with many new additions, so to some it may come off as a little confusing right now. So, for today's video we're going to be taking a look at the entire Dying Light timeline we know of as of now. So let's get right into it and start way back to the beginning of it all. The military years before what happened in Haran were using people in experiments to create a bioweapon of some type. The mother being a sentient volatile was one of those experiments where she was forced to breathe in this blue chemical. Later on in 2014, the events of Haran with Crane take place, with a few years later in 2016, Crane heads to the countryside on the following. If the events of Dying Light Bad Blood were canon, they'd occur in 2017. And a quick rundown for those that don't know about Bad Blood's existence because, well, the player base is a little dead. It's a gay mode, well, battle royale gay mode, centered in an overgrown section of Haran a year after the events of the following story. Your role is basically to compete with 11 other players over collecting samples of this virus hive contained all around the map. Once you've extracted enough samples, you can call on a helicopter to pick you up, which ends the match. Techland is yet to confirm if the mode is canon, but we do know if that were true, it plays a big role in how the virus escapes the city. The people sending in the helicopter and collecting the samples could be GRE or military, but it overall doesn't really matter as we know from the comic, the government plays a huge role in the downfall of it all. We do know both the GRE and the military are working collaboratively with many of the higher ranks in the government for their own personal gain, to rather earn money or use it as a weapon. There's a lot of things we don't know in that middle area of the timeline between this and the events of Dying Light 2, but we do know things only get worse as time goes on. Eventually, most of the world becomes infected in around 2024 to 2025 due to many unknown outbreaks. In January of 2025, the American government played idiotically again for simply wealth and power by dropping a chemical gas advertised that the city as a vaccine on all of its citizens, mutating them into terrifying creatures that continue to wipe out the population. Now with the government gone and most of the humanity in a state of near extinction, the people still have to bring humanity back and we see that take place in 2036, the year the events of Dying Light 2 occur. According to what Aiden says way back in a CG Dying Light 2 trailer, his father told him some things but what is important is that he existed at some point. Maybe his father sold him off or maybe Aiden was taken from him but time will tell. Going back to 2025, Aiden and his sister are separated from the hospital where they were tested on around the events of Black Monday when the rest of the world was turning. Somehow, a fire occurs where Aiden is able to escape of soldiers, but his sister stays behind for whatever reason. I'm thinking it's an important one. We do know the outbreak with Aiden happens at Villador's the hospital in the recent gameplay trailer has the same markings from when Aiden was having a nightmare of memory flashback about his childhood. Looking deeper at these markings, though, we can see a wall to the left of the door where there's handprints of most likely all the children being tested on. We don't really know experiments were used, but by the look of some of this machinery, it looks, uh... Kind of fucked up. <laughs> we don't really know who was conducting the experiments, but we can assume it was someone with a higher role because they've had the extensive power to get these children, but I guess with the state of the world at the time, anything could be possible with power. Aiden, during his little speech we heard during the PC Gamer show, we learned the person testing on him was looking for something in the children. Maybe one of these children happened to be very special in some way, most likely being Aiden or his sister Mia. It could explain how Aiden is able to do all these impossible things. The black hand on the wall signifies one of the children was an outcast, or at least very different. The black sheep I like to call it. Now this is going into more theory territory, so just so you know. Whoever it may have been, the people conducting these experiments were out to obtain something, but everyone who knew about it was assassinated by the chemicals from the GR trying to hide what they did. The chemicals bombed the hospital are most likely the same chemicals that bombed the cities used in Black Monday, so it all just connects even more. Either way, it turned the hospital into a quarantine zone, either if they were trying to hide the evidence or not. Anyways, Aiden ends up leaving Villador and comes back years later in 2036 with a faction known as the Pilgrims, who are outcast survivors who travel the world. Aiden has a motive, as he's searching for his lost and possibly dead sister. And that's where the beginning of Dying Line 2 most likely begins. I could give my own theories even more about how the story might go, but I'm going to save that for a video of its own. Anyways, thanks for listening to what I had to say as always. My name is Ty, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.